All right, well, we're here for episode two of Wolfden University. This, today we're going to do horse racing. We've got a few boys from the local footy club. We've got Tom, Ryan, and Justin down the end there. Thanks very much for coming in, boys. Thanks so, for having us. Please. You in, you're in off-season at the moment? Uh, yeah, we just uh, just been to Europe. Um, okay. First, first month we went to Europe and then uh, got back in Sydney. I got back in Sydney about um, last week, did all the uh, spring carnival, which was nice down at yeah. in Melbourne, so it was good. Went awesome. to uh, Stakes and... Oaks. Yep. It was very nice. Plenty of partying? Yeah, it was a few, few very good. <laughs> you don't look too hungover. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, no, it was, there were always great days down there. Yeah, yeah. No, we, we, were, we were down there for... Um, we were just down there for hit and run mission. Yeah, call of the car, that's about it. We didn't get to the races, unfortunately. Dropped a lot of money to call the car and then came mm. back. So, cool. And did you guys get down to... Yeah, we... Uh, I went down, went, went to Tom for a couple. Yep. And then um, went by myself, but hopefully I can... We can graduate uni for once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have so you guys actually been to uni? No, I, oh. le- I left end of year 10 to be a plumber. Okay. Um, and then thankfully I just got a gig with this country footy club. So, yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Maybe just before. Before. <laughs> I still haven't finished. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't think I have got school done. Right, yeah. So, I mean, you're all obviously here because you, you love the punt. You want to just quickly give us a little background about your punting and why you love it and how you, how you approach it at the moment? Yeah. Um, yeah. I sort of... Um, Obviously, when you when you when you get drafted and stuff like that, it's, uh, there's a bit more money coming in. But you obviously <laughs> got to be a bit smarter. And sort of early on, I was uh, a lot worse than what I am now. Um, yeah. Sort of learn over the years, and we're still learning. Probably the last we've got a lot better anyway over the last probably 12 months, five anyway. Yep. Um, and I sort of started doing my own stuff for the last six to eight months, just a bit of fun, something outside of footy instead of studying uni. I just study the form just to. Yeah, get a little break away. And what, yeah. what are you looking for when you're studying the form? What? Um, I sort of, I've, I've, um, I sort of started to do um, like just normal form with the um, racing in Australia. Mm-hmm. Then yep. I sort of got into the punting form. Um, yeah, cool. and did a bit of data stuff like that. So um, yeah, I like, I like, actually like um, obviously on speed and um, that's that's yep. uh, on speed and that's uh, fitness in the run. Yeah, enjoying it, obviously. Yeah, you enjoyed, lasted yeah. eight yeah. months. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've actually gone all right. Keep a tally and stuff, so I'm going yeah, better than yeah. um, I thought it would. But yeah, He tells us he's winning. <laughs> <laughs> You're betting off his tips? Yeah, oh, yeah. I, so whenever I back them, they lose. Whenever I don't back them. Yeah, well, I'll <laughs> send them and then they don't back me and they back something else. <laughs> they had a nice the, carnival. You're not a mock by any chance, are you? Yeah, <laughs> the, the trust needs to be, needs to be built. <laughs> yeah. Very good. And uh, Ryan? Yeah, yeah I'm, an, I'm you Just grab the mic. When you each one, you can really pull it towards you. Well, actually... I actually suddenly started punting pretty much when I met these two. <laughs> a bad influence, eh? <laughs> um, he but for me, so he's, he's a bad influence. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, pretty amateur punter. Yep. Not uh, don't do any form or anything like that. Just like enjoy a punt on the weekend. Um, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't do my own form pretty much. Fair Follow enough. Any of Pap's tips or or the or the yeah. flux, the flame. As yeah, we, we saw it. It, uh, before but. we would like before we. Um, like before, say if we don't do, I'd, like sometimes I maybe do it like once a week or something. Yeah. But like before that, we'd go on like racing.com and get all the yeah. best bets mm. and things like that. Yeah. There's good information there. Like yeah. all the people yeah. that put something, yeah, they try to put the tips. Very hard. Yeah. That's what we yeah. sort of like. We go on Sky Race and get it and sort of match them all up, and then you sort of just do that. Yeah, yeah. That's what we. Um, and there's a lot of great deals out there the, with, uh, with bookies. Yeah, the best so bet. if you, it's, it's it's hard to win, but if ever it's been easier, it's it's now. Yeah. So. yeah. Which is which is great. Yeah, yeah. I always get the uh, little best bets book. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and it, on the Saturday morning. Uh, and is it a lot like a lot of the boys you hang out with? Everyone into the punt at the moment. Do you feel like it's there's a lot of momentum behind it? I reckon um, it's grown a lot over. Yeah. I reckon the younger. Yeah, it's getting a lot mm. um, bigger now. When I was eighteen, like I was sort of only just starting to get in. I reckon mm. like a young punter. Sure. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I reckon it's definitely growing. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's great game. I love it. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah. As long as everyone's having fun with it. And as long as you, yeah, just don't lose it all. That's an <laughs> important message of this whole thing too. It's like, you know, everyone's got to bet in control and don't get out of control. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, we definitely a strong message out of everything we're going to do, talk about tonight and then also on Friday when we have a bet. You know, it's as long as it's fun, it's good. But if it's not, everyone's just got to tap out. And yeah. There's lots of things in place for people to do that. So we, we fully respect that and, and want to reinforce that message. But um. And what about you, Justin? You yeah, wanna... I, I, I was a bit different. I was more like into my sport, like the the NBA and the NFL. Love that. And then, um, yeah, just come along with these boys and now it's horses and yeah. greyhounds. So, um, yeah, a bit of that. But I was more into the into the sport earlier days. Yeah. You know, just... Sports betting is huge now, especially the yeah. World Cup's on and the NBA betting is huge. Yeah, the, NBA, the NFL. The NBA is It's massive. really popular, especially um, with the younger crew, mm. for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Did you watch the NFL today? 
Yeah. Yeah, that was great, epic. Wasn't it? I, watched, I, landed, I landed the same game multi. Juzzy, Juzzy, I'm not into my NFL, but I just bet on it every now and then. Juzzy made me a multi and uh, nice. it got up, so it was yeah, not beautiful. seven bucks, a bang. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah, because how good was that? Did you watch the end of the um, yeah. Chargers Chiefs yeah, game? Yeah, that was yeah. it. Mahomes. Just Mahomes. It was always going to happen. And like, Kelsey's yeah. just next to yeah, 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 yeah. He's amazing, isn't he? Cool. Yeah. Um, the King, how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Yeah, you've been busy? Very busy, yeah. Bit of this, bit of that. Yeah, you're going to have a break soon. Now, you've got two trips you're going away with your family mm-hmm. to Europe, which is fine, have a good time, but the more, more exciting, interesting trip is you're going to go to the Japan Cup, oh, yeah. hit and run. Yes, hit and run. Can you tell us itinerary? Uh, it's super, super short and short. We leave right? Saturday night, betting all day Saturday, we leave <laughs> Saturday night. Um, this is Saturday after Friday night when we've all had a session. Yeah, Friday night. Yeah. Yeah. Saturday 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 night. Right? Yeah. Then you... We leave about 9.30 Saturday night, okay. flying to Tokyo, I think we arrive about 6.30, going mm. with Matty Taylor and mate of mine, uh, Nick Haywood. Yep. Straight to the, uh, straight to the hotel. Yep. Fresh it up, down for breakfast, a couple of gin and tonics, get the train out to the track, <laughs> a few beers before we go in and away we go. Right. Good thing about Japan though is they love, they just love betting. There'll probably be eighty to 90,000 people there. And unlike here, they are all there to bet. Yeah. yeah. They all, just all love that. On, for horses. On course bookies? No, no on course bookies. No, they're yeah, they just tied. completely tied up. Really? There's yeah. no bookies in Japan. Same with Hong Kong. They've got it all tied up. Really? It's all on, yeah. on the... Yeah. And the pools are probably... I'd say they're the biggest in the world. I know they're a lot mm. bigger than Hong Kong, which I, I imagine they're the biggest in the world. I couldn't think of any mm. where that would be bigger than them. But everyone's just there for the horse racing, which unlike here now, everyone's there to see, everyone's yeah. here to party, which party. and yeah, get on the drinks. So now it'll mm. be fun. I've been there once before, so I'm really looking forward and to it. And then when you how long? And then so you go to Japan Cup on Sunday. When do you fly back to Sydney? Fly back. Uh, we arrive Wednesday morning. We leave Tokyo okay. Tuesday night. Okay, so, so you got to do... Sunday night, Monday night, back home. Well, Last time we went, we only stayed one night. We, it's a good we effort flew flying out. all the way to Tokyo yeah. for 48 yeah. hours to go to the races. <laughs> Monday and Tuesday just to recover. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no recovery. <laughs> recover on the plane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then home for a couple of days and then, then away with the family, which would be nice too. Yeah. So. And the interesting, you boys will find this interesting, like Hong Kong and Japan, the syndicates that play there, they probably bet like 100 times as big as King does. Like this is just individuals, yeah. like they're betting... Like, would, would they? F- I don't know, but it's huge because like they're moving like, markets. So don't they, don't they invest like five, six million dollars a race and stuff? Uh, probably more, I'd say. I, I don't know. Imagine that. Yeah, like, I don't know. Yeah, dropping five, <laughs> six million would a you, race. So you do? Have you do you do a bit of that sort of form, Japan form? Or I you? don't know. I'll, I'll do a bit. Last time I went, I just played some trifectas and Cornellas over there, yeah, but yeah. just going up to the tote window and yeah. trying to uh, translate my bets on it was a lot of fun <laughs> actually. Having a beer in between races, just go for a relaxing, really, just yeah, nice. for a bit of fun. But yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's good. Mm. It's good. Excellent. Um, and so we've put a bit of a strategy together. So if people don't know what's happening, um, the boys are going to come in on Friday night and we're going to sort of drop them into our environment the way we bet. Um, should, should make some good content, some good theatre. Um, you guys have a good time, I think. And um, we wanted to put together a strategy that everyone else at home can follow along with and do themselves. So we've got Kings and... Dan O'Dan O'Sullivan is not here tonight, was happy to help out to put together a bit of a strategy. Um, do you want to just give us a little bit of a background about this strategy, King? Yeah, so the strategy is a strategy that I used uh, in t- about 2009, 2010 and 2011, which is basically just a ticks and crosses strategy. We've assigned points uh, to this one, but I picked out eight factors in conjunction with Dan. We had a chat together and picked out eight factors that we think are positive expectation factors. So... If you backed each one of them individually, you would show a small profit. If you put them all together, then hopefully on Friday night we do show a profit. But overall, historically, if you backed these all these the way that we're doing them, you would show a profit of, I don't know, probably 7 or 8% mm. based on past turnover. So, uh, yeah, it's not the strategy I use now, but I love this strategy because it's so simple. So what we're trying to do basically is create – a strategy that people can use themselves at home. So they might think, um, for example, the barriers that I've put in there are, are no good and they might take that out or put in a few of their own or just completely throw that in the bin, rip it up, throw it in the bin and just use their own. But the assigning of points makes it really pretty simple. And then you can adjust your staking based on those points as well. Mm. Cool. Yeah, great. Well, why don't we rip in and I'll just quickly run through them and you can... Yeah. Give it a little explanation. Boys can ask questions if you don't get it. But the first one was jockey, obviously a pretty simple one. But <laughs> So one point for the four jockeys with the highest strike rate riding at the meeting. And you can find all this stuff on racingandsports.com. They have um, uh, individual strike rates for all the jockeys. And Kings has said that you'd want to have at least 200, 250 plus historical rides, rides to qualify. Is that Would that be 250 for the year? No, nah, it's 250 in, in total. So if you go to that racing and sports site, they do have 
Uh, they break it down by year, but I've just gone past history of all the jockeys just to make it simple. Mm. Probably if I was going to break it down, I, I would not use strike rate. I would, might use the ROI, the, the actual betting, how you've gone actually backing them, but just mm. to keep things simple. Yeah. Usually if you're backing the best jockeys, they return a small positive ROI yep. over time anyway. So we're just trying to find the best jockeys based on strike rate over lifetime strike rate. Yep. Sweet. Yep. yep. <laughs> Speed maps. So you were sort of mentioning that you yeah. like looking at that. It's obviously a huge one. I think it's a, a huge – the more sophisticated bettors get, the more they look into speed maps and stuff. Um, but there's a lot of great information out there now that anyone can access good speed map information. But what Kings is suggesting is that we have one point awarded for the leader, then one point awarded for being on pace, then one point, one point awarded for being off pace. A maximum of four horses can be awarded one point. If, for example, there were three leaders and three pace horses, then only the three leaders would be awarded one point each. If, for example, there were zero leaders, zero pace and six off pace horses, then no horses would be awarded points. A minus one is awarded to all back markers. Maps can be found on the Wolfton app by going to each individual race under the betting section. That, that sounds a bit confusing. <laughs> but what, basically what I'm trying to do is find the four horses, the leader, the second, the third and the fourth off the map. So the way racing and sports do it, which the maps, maps are pretty good, they're just identifying basically leaders, pace or off pace. So if there's no leaders or... Or, or pace horses, then we'd be backing the off-pace horses because they're most likely to lead. So that's all we're basically doing is trying to find the first four horses that are going to settle in the run. Yeah. And so are you boys going to be up for doing the form? Like are you – yeah, you got a pretty yeah. easy, pretty easy we, week? Uh, we, me and Juz tested it out. Clarky's sleeping. He sleeps like every day. <laughs> um, well, we all sleep every day. But he sleeps every afternoon like an old man. But, you guys um, live together? No, nah, no. Nah. Oh, oh, we, we, we all, basically do though. Yeah. 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 Hang out. In each other's yeah. pockets. <laughs> But me and Juz uh, did it today and awesome. uh, yeah, it was good. We, we'll, we'll get into it when we ask a few questions mm. about it. Like yep. you were saying, you can change it up a bit. You can, like yeah, that. for sure. Because we were saying, um, what do we have, if, if you're barrier one and you're a leader, would that, that would be sort of, because when you get down to the barriers, would that be more of a positive rather than it's a, a positive, yeah. yeah. So the good thing about these eight factors is they marry into each other. So at the moment we've got good jockeys on horses that are going to race on pace. Yeah. Yeah. Once you throw the barrier in a couple of the other ones, they sort of marry into each other yeah. quite, mm. quite well. Yeah. Yeah. Number three. Day since last run, one point is awarded to horses that have raced within seven days or less. This can be found in any form guide. Super simple one. So just fit horses basically. Horses in general, if they're one to seven days, they improve a little bit. Not always obviously, but uh, historically through – Worldwide, that is a great factor. So on the quick backup, yeah, the... quick backup. It's a pretty well known factor now. It used to be used to they win just as much now, but the odds have reduced a little bit, which is the same on a lot of these factors. But it's the same in general with the whole market. It's so kept why does it more happen accurate. like less, or is that just because there's more money on Saturday mm -hmm. races, prize money? Like why don't they run more often on shorter breaks? Uh, just because they can't, I think. They like they, well. they sort of set them. Sometimes they can't. You just can't keep. Yeah. Like running them every seven days. Occasionally they run every three days. Mm. Um, Adam Spack actually had a horse that won twice on the same day. He was telling us the other day, yeah. which I've what? never seen before. Yeah. He was telling that us. That was at Adam. the picnics and stuff. Yeah. But the great example is the, is it the Saab Quali. I don't know what it's called now. There's that 2,500 metre race on Derby Day. Yeah, no. And then whoever wins yeah, yeah. it goes straight to the Melbourne Cup. Mm. So yeah. they're back in there. That's a good example of. Yeah. Um, that was an old Bart, <coughs> Bart Cummings Bart, yeah. pearl back in the day. Yeah. 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 Shocking. Rogan did that. Josh. 2009. Shocking did, I did it. So, yeah. Yep. One on the set day. Yeah. Um, weight. One point is awarded to horses carrying 53 and a half kilograms or less, including apprentice claim. Weight and claim can be found in any form guide. Um, yeah, so you want to... Yeah, 53 and a half or less. That includes the apprentice. So that just sort of marries into the other ones as well. You're trying to find horses not carrying a lot of weight that are going to race on pace with, with good jockeys on them. There aren't that many nowadays with the carry 53 and a half or less, so I'm not sure if they're going to be any, but I just threw it in there anyway. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Uh, that's all good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, barrier. One point is awarded to barrier one and also the outside two barriers in fields of eight or more. Barrier positions can be found in any form guide. Yeah, so barriers is – barrier one's pretty obvious. Barrier, barrier one wins the most number of races. Um, but a lot of people would think, oh, why have I put the outside two barriers in? The reason is that they, don't, they, don't, they win not as much as the other barriers, but they don't get as much interference. So if you've got an on-pace horse – that is going forward, then it can often sit outside the leader. They're not going to get in as much interference. So 
they are historically under bet as well. So you don't win as often, but your return is is better. Awesome. Keep rolling. Uh, last start comments. Um, one point of water to horses who have had last start excuse, no luck, e.g. wide with no cover, held up, bias against, missed start. Comments can be found by going to the Racing and Sports Enhanced Form Guide. Racenet also provides free detailed video comments. Um, it's a huge one. A lot of people make a lot of money off video watching. Mm. All the big syndicates have teams of people doing videos. Um, it's so boring to have to do. Yeah, it's a, it's 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 a, yeah, it, it would be. Actually, but it actually there's a lot of good insane, free info. It? Racing and Sports has some really good uh, detailed comments in in there as well, and it's something that like the majority of punters would overlook, but you can get a lot of value out of it, especially if you know how to read it. Mm. Um, so we're looking yeah, for yeah, horses yeah. that were unlucky last start. And I love finding horses that ran terribly, might have run sixth or worse, especially their last few starts. Um, and there's excuses for them. And then they look well-placed today. So yeah. it's just something that isn't really readily available and you actually have to put a bit of work in to go and find them. Yeah. And that's a big point. Like there's so much work involved in all this stuff, like doing it this way, which is great, but – to do, I mean, you guys will find out when you try to do it for Cranbourne and Canterbury on Friday night. Like, I'm not sure how long it'll take. There'll be three of you, but imagine it's just you're on your own yeah, yeah. and there's four meetings on a day and you want to try and bet on all of them. Yeah. To do even this, like, reasonably simple system would be a lot of work. Like, probably to – would you think it would take a day if you were going to do four meetings for to put apply this system oh, for four meetings? No, I don't think it would take it. No, I didn't, don't think it would take a day. I used, to, I used to do this, sit there with pen and paper, ticks and crosses and sit. It took about an hour a meeting, I think. Okay, yeah. You and then you've got to bet on the meeting. Then, so yeah. it, the time gets away from you before you know it, it's full time. And, yeah. you know, so yeah. that's all good. Everything, everything in life is, is a lot hard and if you want to be successful. Um, market price. One point is awarded to horses that are $7.50 or less on the Wolfden app. This one might surprise a few people. A lot of people yeah. like backing roughies and stuff. So. Yeah, just that's just based on historical data. If you back every outsider, then you're going to mm. lose at, say, 15% on turnover. If you back every favourite, I'm talking about at – sort of reasonably at best of three totes and SP basically. If you back every horse in the market, you lose it at say 2%. If you back every outsider, you lose it 15%. And it's a curve that goes higher and higher and higher. Mm. Uh, the longer the price, the more you basically lose. That's if you back every horse. Yeah. And no one's backing every roughie out there. But it's just it just the, the, the first four in the market sort of thing will give you the best four horses in the race. And I think they win – guessing i think it's about 66 percent of races or 70 percent of races right yeah. so if you just focus on those four horses then it takes a lot of the the um the time out of the race as well if you're just focusing on those four horses and um you got about seven the winners 70 percent of the time is in those those four mm. did you have your pricing system when you were doing this or would you just go off the um, no, so I didn't have a pricing system. So you just go off the market? Yes, yeah, market. I just go off the market. So the, basically the market would price for me, yep. which is the way we're going to do it on, on Friday yep. night. The market's, the market's is super intelligent mm. and, and we're just watching the fluctuations of the market and picking our time to put our bet on, which what we're trying to do is just find the top price for that horse yep. and state correctly. That's our job. So here's the tips. Our job now is to state correctly and find the best price for that horse. Yep. And you can put, I always say, it's like thirds really. Third importance on the form, then third importance on staking correctly, yep. and then third importance on betting in the market. I was talking about that in the grading yeah, in the as well. Yeah. Um, track bias on the day. One point is awarded to horses that are advantaged by track bias, and a minus two is deducted from all horses that are disadvantaged by the bias. Track bias on the night will be discussed and re-evaluated after every race. Yeah, so that's going to be fun. We'll get you boys involved in that, whether you think it's leaderish or the fence is off or that sort of thing. So, so Fitzy, Fitzy sits there, is like, he loves talking all that stuff. Yeah, he loves it, yeah. 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 But if we're bonusing barrier one and the inside's off, then we've, yeah. got, to, we've got to take points away from it as well. So, uh, yeah, track bias is huge. A lot of these factors, like a lot of things, were, were bigger 10 years ago because people weren't sort of onto them, or not even 10, probably 20 years ago. But nowadays... It's so readily available and so talked about through the media and everything that the, the edge has dropped away, but mm. they're still very, very relevant. Cool. Bet selection. Um, this is where it starts to get a bit confusing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everyone will be spinning now. Horses are selected from the highest number of points to three points until 66% of the betting market has been reached. If, for example, two horses on five points were both $2.50, then that equals 80% of the market, a no bet race. 
For example, if one horse was five points and $2.50 and horse two was four points and $2.50, then only one would be a bet. Does that all kind of make sense? It might not. Yeah. yeah so yeah. We, we, we're just yeah, taking the highest point. We're starting at the – whatever's got the highest points, that's definitely a bet. Yeah. Yeah. And just going down and down and down mm. until we reach 60 to 6%, then we cut it. Yeah. So that's if basically – They've got to be in the – Three point bracket though, don't they? Yeah, if they're yeah. not, if, yeah, if, if three it's or not higher. three yeah. points, then we don't. If there's nothing in the race three or higher, we, we're not yeah. betting on the race. Yeah. Um, betting plan, this is it's starting to get fun now. <laughs> so, four points or more to win 20K, max bet 10K if market signals indicate the horse is fancied. Four points is 10K and 5K max bet if the market is unfancied. <laughs> three points is 10K and 5K if it's fancy. Three points is 5K and 2,500 if it is unfancied. Do you guys understand that like the term yeah. unfancy? Yeah. Yeah. Would you do you use that? We use that with just the Wolf Den app, or you use it? How so do you use Betfair or? Do yeah. You, so we we'll watch yeah. Betfair a lot. Yeah. That's a great, you know, obviously a huge yeah. tool in telling if it's, you know, how fancy the horse is. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the bookies fluctuations, you know. Um, yeah. So yeah, we I mean we watch like everything. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll be watching the three things we watch are Betfair, we watch tote movements, and we watch the corporate bookies fluctuations. Yeah. So sometimes you'll at nine a.m. or something when the NBL kicks in, you'll see a horse that goes eight into five, yeah. and they what they do now is they bring the prices in too far. So someone they smart it, obviously yeah. backed it, and yeah. you've got a free tip there because you can see it went eight into five. Yeah. Then the price will ease back out. If that was one of our bets and it was still longer on Betfair, then then I might we may make that a sort of a full bet, even though it it might have drifted from the official prices when they came up twenty minutes out. You know, sort of some, someone smart still on that that yeah. horse, so mm. yeah. we may make that a full bet so, then. What was the one on Saturday in the first that um, Ballarat well, it was against hypothetical Bella Ritchie. That was what that was what happened. It was over yeah. eight nine bucks on tab. We got a bit of mail for it yeah. and a, into five fifty with him, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it slowly wound back out back on, on jump start. Yeah. I think it wanted to jump six fifty or seven bucks or something. Yeah, but the you fluctuations are mad now. Back in the day, they like nine dollars. Someone smart backed it in. It was yeah. turned into sort of eight fifty or eight. Yeah. And that, yeah. then they'd be solid at that. There was no – there'd have to be more money for them all the time. Mm. But now it's nine straight into straight into five sometimes, yeah. especially yeah. on the country meetings. Yeah. You guys are like seeing how sensitive the market is towards when King's bets and stuff. Like it, yeah. It's, yeah. it's interesting to watch. Yeah. He, yeah. King sent me a – we were driving up to Wagga. <laughs> we, what was it? At, uh, we were driving to Wagga and King, I messaged King's, oh, man, I'm bored. Have you got any tips today? <laughs> I think – where was it? Jaz? Oh, I, I don't know. I, got, I reckon he, he must he, – <laughs> He sent me before he's back, his bet, and okay. I've bet, and I've got all these overs, and then next minute it's into four it's bars, nice, yeah. <laughs> and it's just and it's just let it one, and it was it was. Yeah, I think yeah, I got it like, doesn't take much nowadays. <laughs> yeah. so. It was gold. We were like, wow. Is this when you got the tip off the old mate? Yeah, that was the same drive. Yeah. 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 That was the same. It's drive. What a great it's day become, on the It's park. become a legendary drive. Oh, yeah. 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 It was gold. Everyone picked up on that. That was great. Yeah. Um, yeah so that's 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 the betting plan. What what chance are you sticking to your limits and not going early? I'm I'm I'm. No, I've got to. This is a university. I've got to. You've got to. I've got to. I've got to. I guarantee you there's I've no got chance you will. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I've got some questions from people who follow us on that, which is awesome. But do you boys have anything else you want to add before we roll on? Uh, well, with, oh, yeah. here you go. With, um, so you said like. Yeah, grab them. You'll uh, deduct points. Yeah. Deduct points. Um, like if the track's doing something. What if it's like you're like a wet tracker or something where you. Like add points onto that. Like if it's like wet or do you? No, nah, it's that just much wet, wet tracks. We're not really worried about. We're just worried about the bias of the track. So yeah. if it's a wet track and the inside looks completely gone and they're all getting off the fence, which often happens on a wet track, then bar we we'll deduct barriers one, two, and three. Probably we'll de deduct them two points, uh, two points each. So if it's not wet, but the first leader wins or the second leader, especially at um, a decent price. So when you're looking for bias. If a dollar fifty shot goes straight to the front, and wins easy, then doesn't mean that's a leader's track. But if a fifty to one shot leads all the way and the twenty to one shot behind it, and sort of nothing comes down the outside, then you'd probably then you would say, well, geez, the fence is on fire. Yeah, we'll yeah. bonus the leaders and maybe barriers one and two as well. Yeah. yeah. So it just depends on what the track's doing on the on the day, really, mm. not the track condition. Yeah, and you could like you were saying, like just sort of like like in the you have those factors, but you can also add your own. Like if it's Absolutely. first up yeah, and yeah. it's got good first up form, or Absolutely. Like that, you can just sort yeah. of add, you don't have to. You can add nah, to that. you can mm, yeah. you could throw all them in the bin and just have your own, but just yeah. follow that but point yeah. system yeah. as well, yeah. and um, do it that way. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And Betfair and the market's really good at like when if it does start raining, 
Betfair's really good at letting the horse get to its more right price because it's weather affected. Yeah. That's why it's great yeah. having that kind of if horses are fancy to unfancy. I mean, it's not a hard and fast rule. Yeah. But we often <coughs> we don't pay that much attention to what's happening on the track because we kind of let the market sort things out um, and try and guesstimate. It's yeah. often it's good. Like price. if you watch the first two races, then you can bet. Like if it was really leaderish and we really like one in race eight or race seven, we will, I would say let's go and back this now. Mm. Yeah, and just try pile and straight into it. Yeah. yeah. And the same with wet track. I don't really do it because it's not my forte, but a lot of people will go and see what the rains, uh, the forecast is. And if there's a shitload of rain tip, they'll go and back all the wet trackers mm. and, and get all the value about them early on a Wednesday or a Thursday. So just got to be one step ahead sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I was more just thinking like, say you had something that was way above in the points, mm. maybe like two or three points more, mm. but, but it's still not fancied by the market. Would you still. Back that in, or would you? Lay so we ha- we ha- we have a uh, half stake on it, fifty percent okay. stake. So the, that's how much sort of uh, importance you place on the yeah, market. That's yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We and still it, back it because you still got to back yourself. Yeah. We've done the form, but it's just about the, getting the staking right. And a lot of the time, when when I bet, it's about the odds I take. So even if I really like a horse and I want to full bet it, I can't because there's not enough volume on Betfair. Like yeah. Betfair. Is generally on unfancied horses is the top price, but if there's not a if it's trading at say nine dollars and I want to have four thousand on, I can't. I can only have five hundred at nine dollars. Yeah, yeah. If I want to have my whole four thousand on, I'll average eight dollars <coughs> sort of thing, and yeah. might be an eight dollar twenty or an eight dollar forty chance. I'd rather have five hundred on it at nine dollars and four thousand on on it at eight dollars. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, all right, we'll roll into some questions. This is from Nathan G. Hey guys, quick question. When evaluating if a horse is fancied or unfancied, are you looking at market support late or lack of in betting, say monitoring market direction in the last 20 to 30 minutes before they jump? Uh, yeah, well, I'm looking so early. Uh, I'll look at the the um, corporate fluctuations. Then monitor Betfair from probably about 20 minutes out. And then continue to monitor to Betfair, but there's a trend in Betfair now where the smart money comes in super late with a minute to go, and the tote fluctuations. Before it was sort of five minutes to ten minutes to go, there'd be a lot more volume on Betfair. But now a lot of the bigger syndicates are just putting their robots will start with depending on the size of the race meaning with one or two minutes to go. So there's a lot of fluctuations in that last two minutes, which they never used to be. Mm. So yeah, to answer the question from from basically the start of betting really you can watch that last minute now can't you as well on the betfair live, betfair live yeah betfair we should live. we should we need to pay more attention to that yeah mm. jack was showing us the other night we need to look more into but it like you can no, looked at it on betfair you can like betfair live whatever because I, I looked it up as well and like it shows you how much money in the last um minute or two is going in so like i don't know today it was a small meeting at wagga but like say last minute it was three thousand on the favorite or oh yeah yeah, yeah. So mm. very much like sports bed Market movies, yeah, and yeah, yeah. The Ladbrokes ticket where they show like the big bets, yeah, and that, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. S- similar to that. Yeah, we know the flame well. <laughs> <laughs> they're good with all their icons and that. Sports could be, it could be a fake flame. And then he said, do you, "Do you put a percentage on uh, on how much it moves?" No, no. Okay. Now a lot of it's by feel too, because I've been doing it for so long. You just get a feel for when you know horses are just completely not there, and you should be having less on them. Yep. Sweet. This is from A Salt. Was wondering if you guys do much early betting or would you rather wait for the market information? Is the market information more valuable than taking the better price? Also wondering if you if using a staking method like this takes out the need for pricing horses. Well, yeah, definitely. I can answer that last one. It definitely takes out the need for pricing Yeah, there's horses. no pricing. With the um, do we bet early, if there's something that we really like and, and it looks a decent price, yeah, we'll get straight into it. So if something was six points, I'd go and have a look at that and say, because it's more likely to sort of be off the map and you want to be first in and that's sort of how I handle the early betting. If I really like one, I'll be keen to get into it. Yeah. And the three or four pointers, we'll just wait and let the market guide us on those ones. But yeah. Sweet. The 500 punting. Hey guys, really interesting, loving it. Noting there is no point system for time, form or ratings. Do you overlay this point systems against time, form and ratings? Do I overlay? No, so there's no there's no time form or ratings in this yep. uh, particular system just because it's to make it accessible uh, for everyone. Yeah, I mean you can get free ratings from um, Daniel off, offers through TRB. He offers his, his ratings if you buy it for for pretty cheap. 
for pretty cheap money if you download the um, – go to the GTX program. But it would be too basic. All I'd be doing is awarding points for the top raider, yeah. which I don't really want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, um, then, yeah, you know, well, do you get a bit more complex that wasn't with part of the exercise either. No. So, yeah. so we want to be, make it as, as accessible as exactly what you just said. As yeah. Possible. Um, another question, I didn't write his name down, which is bad. At what stage does the drift become alarming? No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, it's just a price. Yeah. It just means that it was too short before. It doesn't mean it can't win. Mm. $4 to $100. Well, it shouldn't have been $4 in the first place. It doesn't mean it can't win. Mm. I've seen them, plenty of them win. Mm. Just means that you, I hope you horse didn't take four dollars. That's all. Is that horse doesn't know it's drifting. Does a horse yeah, doesn't know nah, it's exactly. Just it's jockey does that. Yeah. <laughs> if it's swinging up in the yard, though. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> That's not <laughs> This is from Better Be Plusive. Better. Yeah. <laughs> Trippy's answer. To ask us a question. My question is, why bet to win X amount? Say you end up on a horse with three points and it's ten dollars to win. You can only stake one k max. Your edge is still worth three points. You could turn over more if you stake accordingly to the point system and your bankroll. Staking based on liability will result in more being turned over on shorties. However, your edge is confined within certain odd ranges, only the points system above. Yeah, so we're betting at Cranbourne, which the, the minimum bet's only to win 1,000. So if I find something, at, if we want to back something at 20 to 1, we'll have 1,000 on it to win mm. 20,000. Um, if you go a lot higher than that, with the resources that we have, it'd be hard to get that on at the right price. So yeah. if I find a 50 to one chance, mm -hmm. that's what I was saying before, yeah. I, I, don't, I probably couldn't get a thousand or 2000 on it. Oh, so right. we had a level stake, we're gonna have 5,000 on everything. Yeah. You find a 20 to one shit, we can't, it'd yeah. be 20s into 10s and we'd yeah. average 14 bucks or something instead of having a thousand on a 20. So the staking plan is designed so that we are getting top odds for all our bets. Awesome. Moving along, Alex asked, are there are these eight points specific to Canterbury, Cranbourne, i.e. generally on pace or fence bias tracks? Australia-wide. Australia-wide, very good. Yep. Uh, moving on, Hal Zhang, how would the back test look? Do you guys use BSP or just corporate SP to test these? Well, I don't, we're not doing any back testing. I haven't back tested this specific system. I've back tested every part of the system. But uh, So when I do my back testing, I measure it off BSP, best of the best, best of three totes and SP, top flock, and then just work out where I should be betting, putting each each price range on or each where where the value is. So, But I haven't back-tested this particular system in, in its entirety. Cool. Um, moving on, Jacob Scalini, one of the, one of the great Den members, with mm. speed maps. They seem to vary quite a bit depending on where you look, e.g. Wolf Den to Tab. Is there any particular one you guys find best or the free ones, or any worth looking at paying for? Oh, probably racing and sports, I, I would say, are, are very good. So speed maps are funny because people come up with different things, but I've what works best for me is just coming up with a style of racing rather than an actual speed map. Because speed maps, they don't work all the time. Something's going to lead and you think there's no pace in the race and then they go 100 miles an hour. But most of my modelling is done off actual running style rather than the position I think the horse is going to end up in. Mm -hmm. But and that's what racing sports do. They have, they do have a map, but it's more about running style. So I would look at that rather than an actual speed map. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Last question. Um, Scott Travers on the den again. Just quest a question around the jockey strike rate. Are we using the overall jockey strike rate or does anyone see the value in looking at the jockey strike rate at the track? They can vary significantly, just a thought. Uh, yeah, jockey strike rate at the track, I think, would be beneficial, but you're getting down to very low sample sizes. And once you do that, then the, I find the results are too – they just get scary. Low sample sizes, 100 rides at the track or 50. You're going to get great results if you look back and oh, if you – you know, they might win 30 or 40% at the track. But, yeah, I'd rather look at it uh, – get an overall picture rather than just – needling right into one place i uh was watching one and you're keen on the j trainer jockey combo yeah yeah i i was back in um j mac and kieran ma yeah in the, the car i think they were going at like 45 percent or something ridiculous yeah, right. yeah. They had, he like yeah 90 rides or something and won about 40 of them yeah for kieran ma it was ridiculous yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean both both freaks he's yeah. a great trainer and we know about j mac yeah exactly wrote a couple of hong kong did he? yeah Last yeah. 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 Wrote two, two. Think, yeah, Zach wrote about three or four, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. 
And then mm. uh, Huey Bowman won the last on Good Buddy. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Back that was nice. Yeah. It's amazing those big meetings, how often the good jockeys win. Mm. Like that being we've got five, six, seven race, seven out of 11. Yeah. I think those three jockeys won. Mm. Hopefully we can do it on Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's going to be riding. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Well, there'll be a few yeah. away, won't there? Well, they're yeah. All yeah. Yeah, is, yeah, is, is anyone uh, going to Japan? Is Jay Mack going to Japan? No, know? I don't think so. No. no, I don't think any of them are over there. Oh, Damien Lane maybe. But that's about it. Yeah. Uh, Craig Wee- was Craig Williams over there as well? I don't know. Not that I know of, but he could be. Mm. Will that come into it if majority of the best jockeys are gone? So that's not less dominant for the top four, if you know what I mean? It could be, but we'll just, yeah. So there we go. There's still, it doesn't matter even if you go down, 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 there's yeah, still the four still, best. The four like best even yeah, so it wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't affect it. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. Sweet. And do, you, do you ever, um, so you don't futures bet ever? No, I don't. I actually get, can't get on futures get bet. On. They won't. They, oh, yeah, okay. they. Um, but I don't look at it. Even if I could get on, I probably wouldn't do it. It's just so many races on every day. I can't yeah. keep up with what I'm doing yeah. without looking at futures as well. So yeah, people say uh, like it'll be a Friday morning. Someone say, oh, "What do you like tomorrow?" I'd be like, "I haven't even. I'm gonna get through today first. Uh, yeah. But you're dealing yeah. with scratchings and all. Like if yours gets scratched, you do your money. And I've done it a few times. I've never had much good at it. I like betting on the footy futures, the league futures. Oh, yeah. yeah. Apart from that, or the World Cup. Yeah. But horses, I find horses re- really hard because you don't know who's going to be running, who's in, who's out and everything. So, yeah. you, you were, For a Saturday meet, would you do the form in the morning or Friday or just for Saturday morning? Saturday morning. So Saturday. everything's computer. Yeah. Bang, for, bang. Yeah, yeah, but for this you can sort of – you can do it, do it any time really. Probably after scratchings would be the best, but you could certainly prepare yourself with something like that on the Friday night before. Yeah. You're asking more about him though, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, every, yeah. Everything's computerised computer. now. Yeah, yeah. and so, you just – Bang it up and then just... Yes. Yeah. I like to look at it sometimes if I get time. I'll go through the Friday night before and familiarise myself with yeah. what's going to happen the next day. But sometimes I just walk in as well and just, <laughs> you know, get into it. So, But I don't change things too much. It is what it is. And I, my job is yeah. just to put the bets on at the right price and and uh, the results sort of whatever happens, happens. Don't worry about it too much, which is yeah. the same on Friday night. We're doing the work and whatever happens, happens. Yeah. We've, mm. we've got our staking plan there and... We might increase it a little bit if we're, <laughs> if we're feeling lucky or we, <laughs> we need to get an there at the end. But, yeah. no, nah, it's just, yeah, don't let – just the results will take care of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. How are we feeling? Good. Well, I mean, yeah, pretty yeah, calm. We're ready to go. Fast forward. Yeah, we've been talking about it for since, ever since Rich texted me. So. Yeah, nice. We, uh, it should be fun. Yeah, we, we carry on a little bit. But yeah. That's all part of it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It'd be good. A lot no, of we'll have fun. But really. it's, it's, it's first grade on Friday night, so you guys – First grade debut, you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Ready to graduate. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, cool. All right. We'll um we'll see everyone on Friday night. Yeah. Thanks, Cheers. Rich. Thanks, Thanks boys. Nice. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks for having us. us.